wicked world. Now the rules. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen, just a little quick one. <laughs> I'm on half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, Marshall St. Patrick Hewitt, and I'm back, I'm back. This today, at the time of recording, it's Tuesday the 16th of July. This probably should have been recorded at the end of last week, Saturday, Sunday, whatever, maybe even Monday. But you know what? The game's the game. It is what it is. And um, this is the, the ratings show. This is the one where we look back at Lord's and actually give out the world-famous uh, Caribbean Cricket Podcast ratings. At the time of recording, England have now announced their squad, sorry, their 11, I should say, for the second test versus West Indies. A reminder that the first day of the second test match at Trent Bridge begins on Thursday, the 18th of July, and England have made one change. Um, as expected, Mark Wood comes in for Jimmy Anderson, the now-retired Jimmy Anderson, and like, there's no shocks there. There's no analysis really to be done. England obviously dominated the first test. Why wouldn't they go with the same team minus Jimmy? Obviously, Mark Wood brings that extra pace. Um, everybody in the Caribbean always loves to say, Nkrumah Bonner can't bat pace. Darren Bravo can't bat pace. Well, we're about to see if it's only them two in the Caribbean that can't bat pace, because now they're about to experience real high pace from Mark Wood. And we'll, we'll see how that goes. This is not the video for me to say, and this is the team that West Indies should play against England. I do think, mm, actually, there may be no changes. There may be no changes for the West Indies team. If Shamar Joseph is fit, I expect him to play. Um, if they have any doubts about him, that I, th that I suspect would be the only change in the team. But anyways, let's go back to Lords. And you lot can use these world-famous CCP ratings to decide if anybody should be dropped going into the Trent Bridge test. That's up to you. That's not up to me. I'm just here to give the ratings. You lot can discuss in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. Head to www.patreon.com. As always, um, them train tickets to Trent Bridge, they weren't cheap. That hotel room in, in Nottingham, it weren't cheap. Head to www.patreon.com forward slash cab cricket for as little as $1, one rupee, one yen, one pound, whatever your currency is, every little bit helps. Anyways, let's get straight into it. Let's give out the rating. Starting with the captain himself, Mr. Craig Brathwaite. Craig scored six in the first innings, chopped on a nothing delivery from um, Gus Atkinson. No real foot movement. Real ugly dismissal for Craig. Uh, six off 33 in the first innings. And then in the second innings, Craig made four off 26. Bowled by a delivery from Jimmy that would have got every single batter in the Caribbean out. So as much as people can say, Craig, this, Craig, that, we have to recognise that the delivery that got him out in the second innings would have dismissed everybody in the region. Um, so six and four, 10 from the captain across the piece, not good enough. Um, for any of the players that watch this, I beg you don't get in your feelings. Like, none of this is personal, because at the end of the day, your standards should be higher than my standards. Craig, zero out of 10. Zero out of 10 for Craig. Let's keep it moving. Mikhail Louis on debut. Uh, Mikhail Louis, obviously test match debut, fresh off scoring, uh, being the top run scorer in the West Indies Domestic Championship, his first ever games um, in, um, sorry, what am I saying? His first seven ever first class games straight into the West Indies squad on debut. First in his 27 or 58 balls before he fell to a magnificent catch from Harry Brook at what, third slip or something? He looked quite fluent, Mikhail Louis. showed the hallmarks of what those of us who have watched him in domestic cricket have said, which is that he looks to get on with it. He's not prepared to just sit there and eat up balls. That said, in the second innings, he went at a much um, lower strike rate, 14 or 49 before he edged through to um, uh, Jamie Smith behind the stump. So in total, on Test Match debut, Mikhail Louis made 40... What did he make? 40... 41 runs. Um, 
it it's not good but there were some signs there there were some signs there of somebody we can work with but we have to be a realistic test match debut or no test match debut it's still only 41 runs across two innings four out of ten four out of ten for Mikhail Louis I'm not giving him test match debut premium four out of ten although if you want to add the run out which was magnificent Maybe we can put him up to a five out of ten because of the run out. Which uh, did he drop one in the field as well, though? So maybe that negates it. But either way, four, let's settle on four out of ten, maybe four and a half out of ten. Number three, Kurt McKenzie. Ah, oh, boy, Kurt McKenzie. Um, duck. No, sorry, one in the first innings. Uh, before he edged uh, outside his off stump to Crawley, Gus Atkinson again, and then in the second innings he lasted all of nine balls. Duck LBW Ben Stokes. Zero out of 10. Zero out of 10 for Kurt McKenzie. One run contributed. We're not giving out minus scores. We're just giving out a zero. Zero out of 10 for Kurt McKenzie. He needs to come back. He needs to wheel and come again in the Trent Bridge test because that weren't the, that was that was just rubbish. It was rubbish. Zero out of 10. Moving straight on. Alec Athanes. Uh, Alec Athanes, couple of 20s. First innings, 22. Uh, before he nicked behind, um, weakness outside the off stump. We all know it. Alec knows it. Looks compact otherwise. In the first innings, he hit four fours before falling for 22 or 47 balls. Oh, no, that was the second. Sorry, that was the second inning. Sorry. In the first innings, he scored 23 before he nicked a slip to Joe Root. Uh, hit three fours in that innings. Looks solid. Faced 56 balls, then gave it away outside the off stump. Then in the second innings, looked solid, hit four fours, then nicked off behind the stumps. Again, looking, has a brain fade, has a brain fade outside your stump, face 47 balls. Um, probably across the piece was the most compact batter that we had in the test match. How many runs did he score? A total of 46 runs. Um, 46 runs for Alec. 46 runs. Can we give him a five out of 10 for that? 46 runs, an average of 23. Four and a half out of 10. If Mikhail Louis gets four, Alec Athenes gets four and a half out of 10. Boy, we're down bad. Kavem Hodge. Let's move to Kavem Hodge. Sorry, people. I'm moving through this one. I'm trying to, I'm literally trying to do a quick one here. Let me move this across here. Right, Kavem Hodge. Um, Hodge looked good in the first innings, you know. Sorry, a bit shouty there. Hodge looked good in the first innings. Scored, a, scored 24 of 48 balls. Um, three fours, one six. Um, before he edged to slip, a... no, no, he didn't edge to slip. That was the one where it was the magnificent catch from Ollie Pope. So Hodge, Hodge had done a good job with Alec in terms of uh, between Alec and Hodge had put on a partnership of forty four runs for the fourth wicket. Um, that's as good as it got really in the whole test match. And Hodge was looking good. Then he fell to a, a magnificent catch from Pope. So unfortunate for him in that first innings. And then the second innings, uh, he fell for four. I think he hit a he hit a four and then was out the next ball or maybe two balls later. Um, bold. Oh, was that the one where he tried to cut it late? Did he chop on to Gus Atkinson? It was an uh, whatever it was. It was an ugly dismissal. So twenty eight runs in the in the test match for Kevin Hodge. Uh, the 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 twenty four in the first innings I actually thought was good. The four and the chop on the ugly shot in the second innings was shit. Um, what are we saying for Hodge? Twenty twenty eight runs in the test match. Two and a half out of ten, maybe three. Two and a half out of ten. <laughs> Boy, the marks are. The marks are lower out here, guys. What do you what do you want me to do though? Jason Holder, um, with the bat duck in the first innings. So after um Alec fell, literally Jason fell one ball later. He was just in and out like Grandpa Simpson, revolving door in and out. First ball gone, edge to Brook. Crap this. No, was no, was that the crap one? Which was that one? Was that the one where it caught the outside edge, bat turned in his hands, and then it popped up was it a leading edge popped up to brooker yeah was it that one anyways duck first ball duck and then in the second innings um he scored 20 and looked quite good for that 20 before one rolls on him and he just plotted it just dropped it dropped it to um uh ollie pope at short leg i think it was um 
for 20. So didn't really contribute with the bat, but was good with the ball. I thought he, apart from Moti, I thought, I thought Holder brought the most control to proceedings. 18 overs, two for 58. Um, economy 3.22. I thought it was good with the ball. Um, who did he dismiss again? LBW Pope when Pope looked well set. Um, and then later on, obviously got Gus Atkinson to nick behind to Josh De Silva when, when England were trying to score runs quickly. I think the holder rating all depends on what you see him as. If you're rating holder as a batter only, obviously you're going to say what? None out of 10, one out of 10. But Holder's not just a batter. He's an you have my feeling is you have to rate Holder as an all rounder. You've got to be Ben Stokes when you're giving him a match rate, you're rating him based on his all round contribution. So I'm not going to be um, subjective here and just go, well, Holder was subpar with the bat and therefore this is his rating. I have to acknowledge that he bought control with the ball. So that said, two for 58 with the ball, only 20 runs across the match. What did I give Kevin Hodge? Hold a three out of ten. Three out of ten because you have to you have to recognize what he did with the ball. I'm not here to listen to people saying he is we, we have to look at what he does with the bat first and foremost. He is in an all rounder's position at number six. So I can't just denigrate what he did with the ball just because he didn't um do, do well with the bat in the first innings uh i'll say a three out of ten for holder obviously loads you're going to get in the comments and say well, that's nonsense anyways josh de silva moving on josh de silva um he fell two balls after holder so for those of you who don't remember ali kathanes fell holder fell uh one ball later then de silva fell two two balls later three wickets in the over uh to um gus atkinson de silva nick behind to harry smith after two balls harry smith what's his name Jamie Smith, sorry. Um, he took three catches in the England innings, if that matters to people. He is the wicketkeeper after all. And then in the second innings, he scored nine and then nicked behind to Jamie Smith again. Um, so Josh, three catches, a total of nine runs in a team where it's inexperienced. We probably need him to sharp with the bat. Zero out of 10. Zero out of 10. Um, Al Alzari Joseph, where is he? Alzari Joseph came in at number eight. Um, he scored, this isn't his job, but he scored with the bat a total of 25 runs, which was more than Kirk McKenzie contributed, more than Craig Brathwaite contributed, more than Jason Holder contributed, more than Josh De Silva contributed. I'm not saying that that's what we judge him on, but it's just to put his runs in, in context there. In that first innings, he hit 17 from nine, Obviously hit like I think six like three successive fours in a row, and then obviously got Dunce and Bolsey and lofted one straight up in the air afterwards. Alzari Joseph can bat much better than he shows in Test cricket. If he was willing to dig in a bit more, he'd score far more runs than he does. But ultimately, that's not his main job. His main job in the side is to bowl. Alzari Joseph bowled eighteen overs, one for one hundred and six at an economy of 5.88. People are going to say, oh, but Mash, they dropped one off him. Yeah, but the bowling was still awful. His only wicket, who did he, whose wicket did he take? Oh, sorry, Joseph. Harry Brook. He got Harry Brook to nick behind. No, he did, did he? I think he got, He. I think he pushed one through a bit quicker, short ball. I think Harry Brook got a top edge behind the high in the air to Josh De Silva, who just had to step back a few steps and catch it. But one for 106 is shocking particularly when in that bowling attack, other than Jason Holder, you're the most experienced bowler in the attack and you're going for one for a 106. Zero out of 10. Zero out of 10. Because at the end of the day, we have to judge him first and foremost on what he did with the ball. So yeah, I can say he scored 25 runs. Um, I'm willing to give him 0 0.5 out of 10 for the 25 runs. But for the bowling, zero out of 10. Um, Good to catch Multi. Multi should have been brought into the attack much earlier than he was. Should have bowled more overs than he did. Um, had the most control in the team. 16 overs, three maidens, two for 41. Two superb deliveries to get rid of um, uh, Ben Stokes and Joe Root. And then, <laughs> and then, Good to catch Multi scored 14 not out in the first innings. 
and 31 not out in the second innings. So other than Alec Athanes, Multi, Multi was our second highest run scorer with 45 runs at number nine, both not out. And he bowled the best in terms of economy in the team, two for 41. Good. Do you know what? Do you know what? In a down bad test match, for your number nine to score 45 runs without being dismissed and take two for 41, eight out of 10. Eight out of 10. Multi did his job. Multi did his job. Some people say, nah, Mash, we lost by an innings and uh, however many runs. How can you give someone eight out of 10? Multi did his job. Multi is possibly the only player in the whole team and Jaden Seals who can turn around and go, but I did my job. I did what I was picked in the team to do and more because he contributed with the bat. Eight out of 10 for Goodakesh Multi. Uh, maybe, maybe I should be giving him more. Anyways, moving on. Who's next? Is it Jaden Seals? Uh, no, Shamar Joseph. Shamar Joseph um, looked completely undercooked, looked uh, unfamiliar with, obviously, with the con uh, the conditions and the slope at Lords, etc. He looked he looked all out of sorts. He looked like someone who had got off the plane three days before the Lords test. Fifteen point four, and he cramped up. He cramped up on a regular basis. Fifteen point four overs, none for sixty eight. Economy four point three four. What do you do with the bat? As, as if that matters. Duck in the first test, first innings, three in the second. Shamar Joseph, zero out of 10. Sorry, Shamar, zero out of 10. Um, or should I give him one? One out of 10. One out of 10 for Shamar Joseph. One out of 10. Um, and then lastly, Jaden Seals. Jaden Seals, star boy, back in his first test match for well over 18 months. Um, and immediately was our best bowler in terms of wickets. 20 overs, five maidens, four for 77, economy 3.85. Back like he never went away. If the bo if both Josephs can fire at Trent Bridge, if Shamar Joseph is fit, we know that Multi will do his job. If both Josephs can come to the party, we're back in this test in terms of being competitive with the being more competitive with the ball. It's amazing that we were able to bowl out England for 3-7-1, a run rate of only four, given their standards, and two of our bowlers didn't even show up. Um, imagine if Joseph and Joseph had actually shown up, so to speak. But Jaden Seals, four for 77, technically the pick of the bowlers. Uh, bowled Zach Crawley for 76. Uh, got Duckett to um, Nick behind to Josh for three. Um, got Smith... Um, caught by McKenzie when Jamie Smith was on the charge for 70 and Chris Wokes as well, caught by Mikhail Louis. I think he was he caught in the deep uh, for 23. Some will say, ah, oh, he got late wickets because Smith was on the charge, Wokes was on the charge. Whatever, you still got to take the wickets. Four for 77. He did his job. He did his job. When, though, however he got them wickets, he did his job. Four for 77. What's that? So a wicket every... Let me do my quick mess. Four nines. Oh, so basically taking his wickets at 19 apiece or 20 apiece. Nine out of 10 for Jaden Seals. Nine out of 10. He did his job. He did his job. And in the context of coming back to cricket, West Indies cricket, after 18 months out, he, he did his job. So well done to Jaden Seals. So that's my ratings, people. That's my ratings. A little quick one. Not, not too much analysis there. You'll see that I basically gave out. How many zeros did I give? Kirk, Craig. Josh, Kirk, Craig, Josh, Alzari. Um, what did I give Alzari? Why did I give Alzari 0 0.5? Is that because he made 17? Might as well be zero as well. And then Shamar Joseph, I, I think, was zero as well. So by my reckoning, at least five of the players in the team, you could say zero out of 10. Um Obviously, people say, oh, mash, yeah, oh, mash. I can't believe you're doing that rally around the team. I'm rallying. I'm rallying every time. I'll be at Trent Bridge. I'll be at Edgbaston. I'll be in, I'll be at Queen Park, Queen's Park Oval for South Africa. I'm, I'm rallying, but that doesn't mean I don't tell the truth. I'm not a cheerleader. I'm Mash L. St. Patrick Hewitt, one half the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. We do what we do, and we always keep it real.
Like, share, subscribe. More videos, more content coming. See you soon. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans.